is, well, let's, let's call the main unit order and relate. Is that all right? Excellent. So, I'm going to, let me know when you're ready. I want to call the main order for you are. Uh, just two seconds. I mean, I can look it up real quick. All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order the uh, November 2nd meeting of the Rollinsford Planning Board. Uh, and so uh, before we start, and uh, on the agenda is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hammond's application, is uh, to have a little uh, board debate that uh, obviously there's been a lot of changes over the past uh, couple of months with uh, Caroline leaving and changes in the select board and we don't have an ex officio member here tonight, which normally we do. Uh, and I guess the question is, and I'm inclined to let the, I'm inclined to think to let the applicant if he wants to go forward. Now, Mr. Hebert's down from Lincoln tonight, came down from Lincoln to attend. And uh, I, so technically, I think we're supposed to have well, an ex officio here. But mm -hmm. now, go ahead. I, I, I mean, I thought the crucial thing was to have. The right number of board members to make a quorum. Right, and I think. And, and I mean, Caroline was just here, you know, I mean, she was just so dependable that I guess it never came up. But. There's always, there's always been an exit 15. Yes. Right, so. But is it in the RSA that it yes. must be? So I think it is in the RSA, we'll take a look, that there must yes. be one on the board. Mike, the next uh -huh. leap is, I don't know if it, it says that there has to be well, one. Well, I will, tell you, I will tell you that um, when there was an instance where um, one of the ex officios couldn't make it and another one did come in their stead. So I've never, I've never attended a meeting where there hasn't been an ex officio. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so... I'm just going to check out the RSA myself. So it does say, so I'm looking at the um, Municipal Association website, and it's governed by 673 colon 2, and they have a highlighted section that says, an ex officio, by the way, the term ex officio, which that doesn't mean by virtue of office, I didn't know that. Uh, next video has all the same duties and responsibilities as any other member and can make motions and can vote. The only distinction between the ex-officio member of the planning board is that he or she may not serve as chairperson of the board. An alternate ex-officio member should be appointed by the governing body. If the ex-officio member is absent, the chair may only designate the person who has been appointed to serve as the alternate ex-officio member in their place. So the question is, can I designate someone tonight? Well, <clears throat> doesn't it say should? It didn't say shall on the on the appointment. On the alternate, I guess. The the only should there the, where I saw was that only the select board can mm -hmm. designate an ex officio. Mm -hmm. So what if we have an ex officio and he calls in sick? Then we don't have an or even if we did have an alternate who wasn't available. We cancel the meeting? That, that doesn't seem to make sense. Then you'd have to have, the alternate would have to be approved by the well, No, no, I'm, what if there wasn't an alternate? What if they weren't available? What if they were in Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm sorry, did you say it was 672? 673. 673. <laughs> and then we'll get the RSAs and... 673.2 talks with the planning board.
Weber, H-E-B-E-R-T. So I think I agree, Tom, after looking at it, that on the select board, you know, I'll appoint the uh, alternate. But the further, further question I have is, does it mean that you cannot run a meeting if ex officio isn't present? Do you remind me whether or not we have rules of procedure? I know one of our boards does. We do not yet. Okay. Roberts rules actually the ex officio is not counted as part of a quorum. <laughs> so, so what I'm inclined to do here, Tom, uh, I mean, to have the board vote it also is I, I don't see anything that says the meeting can't be held unless the ex officio is here. So I think what I would do is suggest to the applicant that. <laughs> there's a potential de technical deficiency that we're willing to waive it. If he's willing to waive it, if the board's willing to waive it, we, we go ahead. Makes sense to me. This is a volunteer organization. So. Yeah. All right. I, I just have a hard time accepting that there would be that kind of, a, you know, kind of power that if one guy or one person wasn't here, then we cancel the meeting. Mm -hmm. if that, I, sure. However... <laughs> I will defer to Sarah as far as the RSA, but I don't see where it says. Um, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not advocating that it has to be canceled. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah. But. Um, well, how about if we move forward as you suggested, Mr. Chairman, and I'll call the uh, municipal association tomorrow, and if it turns out this whole thing is void, then. You can come back. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll put up to a vote to the boards on, on moving forward as to how people feel about this. So again, there's some uh, issue as to whether or not the next official has to be here. And a lot of you were newer members. Uh, so we've always had someone here. I think you know, as long as I've been sat on here, well, this issue's never come up. So never had the occasion to uh, to do this before. So I'm going to go around for a roll call vote. Well, I'll just do it by by. By I or nay. Uh, so the issue is uh, whether you f everyone feels comfortable or not moving forward with the meeting tonight, offering the applicant the choice to move forward or not. Again, I'm very sensitive to Mr. Hebert coming from Lincoln tonight. Uh, so uh, those in favor of, of, I guess I'll need to make a motion. Uh, let's all make a motion to. Uh, I'll make a motion that we move forward um, without the extra zero. Present. All right. Able to. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So it's unanimous. All right. So, sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Hammond. By the way, you look remarkably like your father. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the issue uh, 
a lot of unfortunate legalese you've walked into tonight is that we're missing the ex officio member, which is the representative from the uh, select board of the town administration. There's been a lot of recent changes lately. It's unclear whether or not that person has to be here for us to move forward. I'm not seeing it. It's saying the statute it has to be there. So uh, again, it's put very uh, succinctly by Mr. Clark. I suppose there's the possibility that if we go forward tonight and we get an answer that it's a, a bad meeting, that they, someone had to be here, that you might have to come back. But I think it's worth going. Um, it's your choice is whether or not you want to go forward. Yeah, let's All right, forward. so we're going to do that. All right, so um, Mr. Hammond, it's your application. Please tell us about it. Well, we're looking to put a ADU apartment. I need you to state your oh, name right. and address. Your address. William Hammond, 64 Rollins Road, Rollins Road. Um, where got a building permit to put the um, garage on with an ADU apartment behind it. Um, you should have the drawings in front of you uh, of what it's going to be. And I only have, have one copy. Did you bring copies of the I brought floor? a bunch. Of, well, no, you should have had five or six copies. Are they in the... Yeah. So we're, we're looking to do the garage with the ADU behind it. Um, it's roughly 700 square feet of living space and um, shared um, water, shared septic, shared electricity. There's nothing, it's all combined. Okay. Um, and I'm listening to you, I'm just, yeah. checking, it, just checking the uh, Accessory dwelling unit uh, law while I'm speaking, while we're speaking, so. In which I, what I researched on it was you couldn't have an, a, another entrance on the front of the building, so we put it on the side of the building or behind. So okay. you can't see that entrance from the street. Okay, all right. And I think you're going to get a copy oh, of that right now. So there's a floor plan, and I believe there's an elevation plan, so you can see um, which would be on your second copy. Is there an elevation plan, too, Paul? On the back side. Yep. So it's um, so it's less than 750 square feet or less. So do you have a approximate square footage on here? Um, so if we go to unfinished storage, which will be excess. You'll be able to um, get it from both the main house and the garage. Okay, so uh, I'm not great at looking at designs, but so you've got the, so the accessory dwelling unit is going to be obviously on the second floor, right? It's going to, no, it's going to be behind. Oh, behind, that's right. Yeah, behind. Okay, and then behind the garage. And then on top, you've got two areas of unfinished storage, is that right? Yes. And then, help me understand, <laughs> it's apparent to others. So, what is this right here? I know it looks like that's what's sitting on top of the accessory dwelling unit, is that right? Yes. In the back on that right. so, side, yes. So is this just showing? That's you? just showing an aerial view. Okay, it means there's nothing on top of it. Nope, it's all open. It's an open concept, vaulted ceiling. So if you go back to that uh, the drawing, it'll show you right in the living area is a vaulted ceiling. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, All 
right. Anything else you'd like to tell us? No. Any other questions for me? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we may have some, so first I'll turn to our learned, uh, in the law there was a judge called Learned Hand, this is actually his name, I'm going to refer to Tom as Learned Hand tonight, if you can. Uh... That's not bad. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Mr. Uh, um, Hammond and I went over his, his specifications in the zoning ordinance, and um, he, he does write that all of them will be met, um, they're just not enumerated, but, you know, it's, as you board, as the board members know, it's fairly easy application. Um, he does, he meets all of them as far as the, the electrical services, the septic. Um, when I issued the permit, by the way, I issued it with a comment that he would need to get approval for the ADU. Um, so, I think your opening statement was you get the permit for the ADU. No, no, for, for, okay. the, for the actual building okay. permit, yes. not for okay. the ADU. Sorry right. about that. No, no, that's all right. Um, so anyway, there'll be a subsequent permit for the establishment of the ADU. And, um, but he does meet all the requirements in the zoning ordinance. Um, okay, I guess that's about it. I, do any members of the board have any questions for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hammond? Just by way of background, it uh, used to be much more restrictive law in New Hampshire on ADUs and was substantially uh, uh, lessened a couple of years ago. So that's why we're going to see a lot of these coming in. So, all right. Um, well, I don't have any questions. Um, so I believe at this point, uh, I am going to um, open the public hearing and see if there's any members of the public that would like to have any questions or comments. And I'm not seeing any stalwart video videographers uh, in the back. So, all right. So, not who seeing live any. Right, who live right down the street? Yes. Who are neighbors? Yes. <laughs> four, four houses down? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, not seeing any of the public, uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, I, and so, so this is, I, I believe, do we need to find the applications complete, Tom, or not, where it's a, uh, yes. yes? All right. So, um, let's, uh, I have we need a vote on that also, I believe, yes. yes. So, would yeah. someone like to make a vote uh, uh, one way or the another as to whether or not the application presented us uh, before site is complete? I'll make a motion that we approve the application as the up to us. I think no, we have to add We're accepting by the complete, accept, accept as complete first, then we okay. vote on it. Yes. We'll accept it as complete then. All right, is there a second? A second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. all opposed. All right, the ayes have it, unanimous. All right, and uh, now I think it would be appropriate for um, there to be a motion to approve the application for the conditional use permit. Someone like to make it. Put your lean on you again. All right. Is there a second? And there's a second. Yes. All right. All in favor of uh, approving the application for the conditional use permit as uh, presented tonight, say aye. 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 All opposed. The ayes have it. It's unanimous. Congratulations. Um, and so that should conclude the Hammonds for tonight. It does. It does. So free to leave. So, all right, plants. Blake, when do so I move in? So now I just get a copy of this, this or how does hmm? the the snow snow decision I think it does okay. where it was. Yeah, I mean, we have a time frame, whatever it is. Come back to you. Oh, oh, there's there's tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's what oh, okay. That's what I told Charlie. All right, please tell your father for us. I will. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. On the back side, you want to go. All right. Okay. I figured that's who it was. Figured that it's yeah. See you guys. Yeah, thank See you. Ya. Right. The next item on the agenda is uh, let's do the uh, approval of minutes uh, from the, from the September 7, 2021 um, meeting. Does anyone have any comments on that? And failing which, we'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> or for our, right, a motion to approve. I have a question. Yeah. Um, on on the um, 
one of the uh, highlighted spots on other business came up with um, that, that Miles England had an interest in, in um, joining this board. And I don't know if that happened. Has he applied? Has anything happened? So what I, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer. Nor do I. I guess I can reach out to him at some point. Uh, all right, any other questions about the minutes? All right. Um, again, Richard, do you want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Sure, I make a motion we approve the minutes. Is there a second? There's a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, it carries. All right, uh, Sarah, is there any correspondence? Um, there may well be. I, I am not sure who they have appointed to okay, that's take good. care of correspondence. That's a good point. Um, in, the, in the void of not having a town manager, who is the person who really handled the correspondence? Yeah. yeah um, the town administrator. Unfortunately, the duties that Caroline had have been kind of, you know, disseminated. But... None of, or all of us, I guess, combined don't do what she did. So when someone is correspondence that would just come to the town and say, I have an issue with the planning board, and uh, so Chuck, who is the bookkeeper, uh, monitors Caroline's email address and forwards to me stuff that, that he feels should be forwarded. And I haven't seen anything like correspondence at the planning board. So in other words, the, t the uh Planning board email addresses haven't really been changed. No, it's still just planning board. And um, yes, Caroline. Well, I the, S, the, the <coughs> email that we got about the S something RP coming to like. Oh, SRPC. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Yes, we do get <laughs> correspondence. SRPC, unfortunately. They've addressed it to Chairman Miles England, and they also included uh, Kevin Haynes. So they got some internal communication issues. But they just wanted to set up a schedule so that the executive director could come around. Um, okay. They're looking for a short meeting, from what I gathered. 10 to 15 minutes or longer if, yeah. we, if we wanted it. Yeah, um, it was just kind of informal, informational type of meeting is what I understood it to be. And I think they're looking for a yay or nay, do you want one or don't you? That's what I just said. I, um, I personally think it wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, and it might be, you just want to add it to a regular meeting so it's not sure. you know, some special thing. And I could relay that to them. I, I, I'll look over it in a little more detail to see if I probably should have done something. Okay. All right. So um, we need to talk to the plan of the uh, select board to find out who's the check to find out about who's monitoring their correspondence, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, I, I'll, I'll follow up with that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's fairly important because, like, all the, the stormwater things yes. and all that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There should be somebody. Yeah. Just as a note, your selectman is supposed to be Paul. I just texted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, uh, next item, I think it's going to move on, is to uh, Ms. Clark, you had some issue, some uh, information about Castanelli and towing. I just, yeah, I wanted to give you some background. I mean, you know that it was voted, um, I think it was in. April, June, something that you gave him 120 days to complete, he, which he did not do. I've been over there a couple of times. There are more issues with the wetlands um, than there are with the town regulations. And Dave Price, who is the uh, compliance specialist with State of New Hampshire, DES, um, he was quite surprised when he saw what was done because some of the stuff that they had pulled out of the wetlands was pushed back in. And they got a permit to do to replace a culvert on the drive that just goes down the middle. And they, they dredged the whole thing as is really quite a mess. So I'm gonna to put together a letter. I, I had sent a letter to him saying just you know stay away from the wetlands. Um, 
but I think the only way to do get his attention is that I'm, we're going to send a letter and, and Dave Price concurs to uh, just shut him down completely mm -hmm. until he can bring his property into compliance with all the regulations. Okay. So, and in terms of weapons enforcement, and I should know this this uh, answer, but I don't. Um, it's our responsibility to enforce, or is it ours and the state? Yes, it's combined. We have wetland regulations, as does the state. Um, but when the state comes in, when their attention is focused on a particular project, then we, when I say we, I know it's just don't mean town of Rollinsford, we um, municipalities usually allow them to take the lead because they have a little more horsepower. And what we'll do is, I'll send out the letter, um, you know, we have to still give him a few days to comply. Um, and if he doesn't, then the teeth in that is that we send it to the city, the uh, town attorney, and petition the Superior Court for an injunction to stop him. And then if he continues, it's contempt of court. But he has a pretty good lawyer. And when, one of the times I met out there, with the applicant, uh, with the owner, Mo Casanelli, Brian Barrington, who's their attorney, showed up. And Brian was agreeing with everything I said as Mo's attorney, that he had taken out the wetland uh, boundary markers, he had pushed stuff in, and he just kept saying to him, you can't do this. So, um, well, that's on tape. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's what's happening with that one. Hey Tom, remind us if you if you would about the um, didn't weren't they required also to pave the uh, yes and what's yeah. the status on that? Um, he's still doing the grading, which which the contractor that he hires to do the grading up front is doing a great job, and I was pretty clear that we didn't want to stop that because because we want that to happen. Um, he hasn't started paving yet, but he does have all the gravel base down, and he has the areas marked off. He's going to close in the curb cut. Um, you know, it shows on the plan that there's going to be that landscaped kind of area um, in between the drives. So that's moving forward, but it, he hasn't done the paving yet, no. Nor has he submitted a, a foliage plan or a landscaping. Yeah, that's, yeah. I did. It was part of the submissions, L1. I missed it also when I wrote to them. This, the uh, civil engineer asked where it was, and he said, you've had it for two weeks. <laughs> and we have. It's going to be, uh, I forget what the blueberry bushes, I think, or something. Something a little weird. But but um, I checked with the consulting you, engineer. Do you have it as a, as a class, please? Can you forward it to me? Because I, that is not. I you have the... Um, do I have the email? The submitted application for the uh, site approval, right? It's on the drive? Yeah. It's it's included in that. There's like 46 okay. pages. Oh. And if you look at sheet L1, okay. that's the landscaping. Okay. If you can't find it, I can, yeah, I'll certainly forward okay. it. I'll send it over. But we do have that. Okay. Is he beyond the one? Is he beyond the 120 days? Oh, yes. So he's beyond that, right? He was beyond that probably last month, I guess. Well, um... I think it was October 4th. It was 120 episode. So whatever, yeah, yeah, it's about a month. So that's that. Okay. However, I do have another issue to discuss, which we've mentioned a couple of times. The um, 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 the waiver request on Summersworth Road for Daniel Pepin and uh, Brian <laughs> Church, Brian Church. So there's a property on Summersworth Road, it's, it's on the right hand side before you get to Mr. Castanelli's spot. And there's a detached garage way in the back, fairly large, you know, commercial size. Um, Brian Turgeon got a permit to build that to do work on his vehicles. So then Dan Pepin, who was Brian's mechanic, said, why don't you let me fix cars also? So they came to the, to the planning board and um, it was approved, but there were a couple of items on it, one of which is a certain amount of paving around the garage. 
parking area, you know. Um, and that hasn't been done, and this was back in 2018, May of 18. Mm -hmm. So I spoke with both Dan and Kevin, and it's a bit of a conundrum because in looking at this, Dan was the one that showed up to the planning board. He was the one that made the request, he was the one that hired the engineer, he was the one that had the plans. Um, so he was the one, understanding that he, he doesn't own the building, he was the one that was going to make all these uh, site improvements. So none of them were done, and it's been dragging on for a while. So when I spoke with Kevin, he said, other than owning the building, he really has nothing to do with it. So I talked to Dan, and he said, yeah, but I'm all done. So I went out there. The building is pretty much empty, except for some of Kevin's stuff, the owners. But there is no operation of any auto service going on there. It hasn't been for a long time. So my issue, which I'm going to check with the municipal association, do a little more research, do we have to make the owner do the conditions of approval if the business for which they were approved does not exist? So the sign is still there. Yes. Yeah. Is I'm going to have to, yeah. I'm going to get, uh, I mentioned that to Kevin and I did, I mean, now Brian. Now when you say, okay. Huh? You keep saying Kevin, but you mean mm -hmm. Brian, right? Brian. Okay. Sorry, Brian. Right. It's, it's Brian. Yeah. Kevin is his brother. Um. I because I remember that application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Then, um, you can look at it. I mean, yeah. we couldn't find it here in town hall, so I contacted the engineer and he sent me over all the stuff that, that he had submitted to the planning board and the notice of decision and everything. And, yeah. Um, my only issue is, do we make the guy do it if the business is not there? And so if a new so if a new business came, went in there. A new auto repair business is this so the question is whether the new auto repair business would be subject to this? Well, I think if uh, yes, that's a good question, and I think it would determine uh, make a dif difference depending on how long they came in, because if this was approved May of eighteen and there is no work done for five years, then the approval becomes void. Mm. So. You know, there's maybe a couple more years, but if someone comes in in that two years, then absolutely, if he's working in there as an auto repair, I, I wouldn't have any question. I would be able to tell them that yes, you do have to do this as part of the approval for that use at that location. But I, anyway, I'm, I'm waiting for an answer from the municipal association and, and just to see if it's something we make the guy do, but it'll just sit there because there is no other server. And, and yes, I do have to address the sign. So for lessons learned for the for the future then, um, on, a, on a similar type application, we need to, do we, are you saying we need to ensure that the owner of the property is involved in the process? Um, actually, I wasn't saying that, but it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think the owner should be aware that um, they're responsible. I mean, it's his tenant, it's his building, it's his property, and I think though we would still have an issue if the guy didn't, you know, the, the business wasn't run, the owner called up and said, he's not doing it, do I have to meet the conditions of approval? And I really don't know the answer. Okay. But I wanted to bring it up because it was asked about, and I, Weird, it was, Kevin was one of the ones that asked. Um, but anyway, um, so I looked into it and that's what I found. All right. Well, like, so if somebody came in, they could claim it was a grandfathered use and not have to have site approval? Within the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. But without these conditions being met? No. If someone came in before that, say it was. You. Yeah. You wanted to open up car repair. A dream of mine, yes. <laughs> we 
we had to have all, all the all the improvements done, regardless. But like, how would I know that? Well, it would it be would I find this out when I go to apply for my business license? I would get. Uh, I don't know because you do that through the state, right? Mm -hmm. um, it would probably be one of those things where you open up and start working on cars, and I come up and say, by the way, <laughs> you have to do this. And then you say, I didn't know, when you go to the owner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, I, I think, um, I really don't know of another place where this has happened, where it's the owner, but he pretty much, you know, gave all the responsibility to the tenant. Um, it probably should be a little more communication between the town and the owner saying, you know, you're liable for this stuff. <laughs> it seemed like they should be, because the other, you know, take an example of Sarah's case, Sid comes in and she decides to negotiate the rent or whatever for the, the owner of the property, not knowing she could be held liable, and the landlord may say, well, I'm not going to let you out the lease, you signed the lease, I didn't. So it seems like that's something we need to address, nail down in the future. Yep. It's There's a basic idea. fairness issue sure. to the owner, to the tenant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember he came in and he did, and it was Kevin McNeeny who was yes. representing him, and they did say they came with the full knowledge and consent of the of Brian. Yeah. Yeah. He, and he knew he had to make some changes to yeah. have it be a commercial auto body yeah. shop. So he did claim that the owner had full knowledge of... Well, well, yeah, Brian's not denying that. Yeah. But what he said was, it was Dan that got the approval, and it was Dan that was going to run the business, and it was Dan that was going to do the improvements, okay. and Dan is not there. So maybe what we need to do is, is out of town of the town to this, if when someone comes in and says that, that they had the full approval and consent, the owner needs to sign that in writing. Almost mm -hmm. like a... Contract. Authorized representative well, for, for for make it binding. I mean, the one, well, the one thing I don't have is the actual application because normally we do get right the owner's signature on the application. Um, let me see if I have it. Yeah, I don't think I have it. I couldn't find it on the drive, but <clears throat> I can't find the last. Isn't it the owner's responsibility regardless? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think that's what I'm wrestling with. I think it's it because we say to him, I mean, it's, it's a vacant building and there's weeds growing up and that clearly it hasn't been right. Even though it's nice to have to take care of it, you ask him to take care of it. The guy that owns it. Okay. Right. So I have, I have. The, I mean, I have a lot of these documents. <laughs> They, uh, this this application is just at the start of when we were requiring people to send um, send a electronic version. So I do have some of the documents here. Um, I do see a letter of authorization oh. from Brian Turgeon authorizing Kevin to represent the site. Review application submitted by Dan Pepin relative to my property located at Tech Map 2 Lot 22. It's signed. So you have that letter. So that's okay. So I'm happy to send you this, all of this. Can you scroll back down to that okay. letter that you can? So it says, I, Brian Turgeon, authorize Kevin McEnany, gives his license, to represent the site review application submitted by Dan Pepin relative to my property. Located at tax back, da da da. But does that bind the owner to the. I don't know if it. I think, think so because, like, he's saying any changes that Kevin is going to agree to, I am. I, I trust. I, I'm authorizing him to make. Right. So Kevin is. I'm the attorney. Kevin is authorizing. This is what I'm <laughs> Kevin is authorizing Dan, and Dan is gone. Dan is not there. The building's empty. But, it, nope. but oddly, he's actually not authorizing Dan. He's authorizing, he's authorizing Kevin. Kevin. Oh, to represent him. Kevin McEnany? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, 
it's, weird. No, it's, it's the, no offense, the letter could be, it doesn't say to represent my interests, represent the site review application submitted by Dan Prop. I, I mean, I, yeah. I think we'll have to be a little, a little more specific on this stuff in the future. Yeah. But I will follow up. I mean, I, and he doesn't have any interest in opening anything in the future, right? No, nope. it's just sitting there. I mean, he doesn't have this stuff there. There are a couple of vehicles, you know, but, but it's not an active site at all. Okay. Yeah, well, let us know what you find out. Yeah. I certainly will. Absolutely. And I will follow up with SRPC to see if they'd be interested in coming, you know, one of the regular planning board meetings and sure. um, we can maybe put them first on the agenda if they want to leave first. And another thing, last month, didn't we cancel a meeting? Mm -hmm. yes, I think so. Well, I was informed that of all the land use boards, you know, conservation, zoning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the planning board is the only one that must meet once a month. Yep. If you have no appl applicant's application, you must meet. You know, open it, and it's it's six seventy three ten, Sarah. If you're looking. <laughs> no, I am aware that that oh. exists. Yeah, so I, I guess it's just you know moving forward, we have to have a meeting. Like even if you just open and close the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seems. And I'm not sure why the planning board is singled out and you know, like the zoning board doesn't have to or however many, you know, it, it lists the boards and you know, it said they may have meetings mm -hmm. once a month, but planning board is shall. All right. All right. Anything else? For us tonight? No, sir. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. Um, there was an in inquiry about something called tiny homes. That's right. Is there any restrictions or requirements or regulations or RSAs about that? Does anybody know about that? Yes. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> tiny home is one of those things that's kind of working its way through the whole system. That particular email was from a representative of tiny homes okay. who, of course, is trying to get them approved everywhere. Okay. Um, what they actually are, I mean, they're like 400 square feet, usually they're really tiny. Small, yeah. A lot of times they're on trailers. Right. Um, so the issue that, from what I understand, the regulating authorities have is that, is it a mobile home because it's on a trailer, or a manufactured home mm -hmm. because it's on a trailer, mm -hmm. or is it a house? In my opinion, and in the um, New Hampshire Building Officials Association opinion, it is not a house because it does not comply okay. with the codes adopted for a house. Um, it's one of the things being size, you know, there has to be minimum, minimum size. Um, so it's still kind of working its way in New Hampshire. It's, it's, I'm not sure of any community in New Hampshire that, that addresses them specifically in or allows them. It's, it's come up a few times in, in conversation, but it's just kind of... Here's my question. If somebody were to come up with the idea of, I'm going to have one, and say, John has got 15 acres of land, and he doesn't mind sharing a quarter of an acre with this person, is it all horrible? Um, off the top of my head, I would say no. We would have to have, you know, if it was going to be a principal dwelling, mm -hmm. then it would have to have its own lot. So it would have to be subdivided. Okay. Then we'd have to see that it has, you know, sewer, water, et cetera. But usually they're self-contained, right. um, so it, it doesn't mean any of the building, plumbing, electrical, mechanical codes. Okay. Okay. So um, the answer would be in this case, no, no. in New Hampshire, right now. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think it's appropriate to entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, I'll make the motion to leave here. And I second that. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, thank you all for coming.